This lecture is part of the online algebraic geometry course on schemes and will cover products of schemes. Um, so let's first just recall what a product in any category is. So if you've got two elements, X and Y, in a category, you can ask, is there a product X times Y of them? And what a product is, is a sort of universal element with maps to both X and Y. So this means if we've got any element Z and maps to X and Y, then there's a unique morphism from Z to X times Y. And you can check that products exist for sets, groups, and so on. And um, you can also see that any such product is unique up to isomorphism. And um, has most of the properties you expect from products of sets. And what we want to do is to show that um, products of schemes exist. Um, well, more generally, we don't just want products of schemes. We want products of schemes over a base scheme S. So what this means is that X and Y should both be schemes over some base scheme S. And we want a product of X times Y over S, which is usually denoted like this. So it's, it's a universal element that if we take maps, if we take an object Z together with morphisms to X and Y that commute with these morphisms here, then there's a unique element like that. And, and of course, the, these two maps should also commute with each other. So, so that's what we want to prove. Given schemes X, Y, and S and morphisms like that, we want to show the existence of a, a scheme with this sort of universal property. Um, and we first do it for affine schemes. Well, affine schemes are more or less the same as rings except that the direction of all morphisms gets reversed. So what we want to do is to um, have um, something like a product of rings with all, all arrows reversed. So given rings A and B, um, we want to find some sort of object here, which is universal for maps of A and B to it. So if, if we've got any ring C, and homomorphisms from A to C, then there should be a unique map like that. Well, um, just as before, we really want to do a relative case. So we'd really like to work with rings that are algebras over some fixed ring R. Um, and this will be the tensor product, A tensor over RB. So um, uh, just have a quick review of tensor products. So you remember that if M and N are modules over R, we have a tensor product M tensor N, which is universal for bilinear maps. In other words, if we've got any bilinear map from M times N to some module um, um, X, say, then this factors through um, a map from M times M to the tensor product M tensor N. So this map, some of these maps are linear and some are bilinear. So this one is bilinear. And this one is also bilinear, but this map here is, is linear. So it's a sort of, a tensor product is a sort of way of converting um, bilinear maps into linear maps. And its existence is kind of obvious. You can see there's a sort of universal um, module generated by a bilinear image of M times N, because you can just define the tensor product. M tensor N is generated by elements 
M tensor N for M in M and N tensor N. And then you um, quotient out by the, the relations to make the map from M times N to N tensor N bilinear. So we'd add relations M1 plus M2 tensor N equals M1 tensor N plus M2 tensor N and R M tensor N is equal to R M tensor N and the same for N. So this gives us a map from M times N to M tensor N, which takes M times N to M tensor N. And um, this map is, these relations force this map to be bilinear and you can see it's sort of universal because if you've got any map from M times N to some map X, then you can just um, extend this to a linear map by taking M tensor N to the image of M times N. So we have a, um, a tensor product of modules. And um, if A and B are, are algebras, then A tensor over RB is also an R algebra. Because you can define a product on A tensor B by A1 tensor B1 times A2 tensor B2 equals A1 A2 tensor B1 B2. And you can easily ex check that this extends to an algebra structure on A tensor B with um, by, by using the universal property of the tensor product. Furthermore, this is universal um, given A and B and R, then if we have algebra maps from A and B to any R algebra X, then you can extend this to a map from A tensor R B to X just by saying, you know, if this map is G, F, and this is G, and then this map is just defined by taking the image of A tensor B to F A tensor G B. So A tensor over R B is a coproduct in the, the, the category of commutative rings. Coproducts are just is, is just like a product, except you reverse all the arrows. So it's sort of universal for um, maps like this. It's, it's also sometimes, this is also sometimes called a push out because you think of A tensor RB as being pushed out from A and B. Anyway, if we reverse this, we see that for affine schemes, there is a product. Um, in, in, in fact, a product over um, over any um, affine scheme S, because given schemes of the form um, uh, spec of A and spec of B mapping to spectrum of R, then the um, product over spectrum of R is just the spectrum of A tensor over RB. So for affine schemes, the existence of products follows from the um, behavior of tensor products of commutative rings. Um, a product of arbitrary schemes, X times over SY follows from First of all, the product for affine schemes plus lots of bookkeeping. So um, what I will do is I'll just sketch how you do this um, because filling in all the details will merely cause everybody to fast forward to the end of the video. Um, so, um, um, first of all, we've done the case when X, Y, and S are affine um, by using A tensor over 
r of b. Now we look at the case when x and s are affine, but y might not be. And all you do is you cover y by open affines yi, and you glue together the, 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 the schemes x times yi. So the idea is that yi might be covered by, um, say, a couple of affine open sets like this. So, so here's y. And um, what you do is you take the product of these with x. So this is y1. And this is y1 times x. And this might be y2 and y2 times x it might look like that. And then you glue together y1 times x and y2 times x. And um, you get uh, um, a scheme um, that uh, ha has the property of x times y. And we can do that because here we're, we're, we're just taking a product of two affine schemes um, over S. I guess I should have done this all over S. Um, then you can take S to be affine and X and Y anything. And again, what you do is you cover X by schemes XI, which are open affine. And we glue all the schemes XI times over SY, which we can do because we know how to glue affine schemes times any scheme over S. And finally, as you can probably guess, we cover S by open affines SI. And we put XI to be the inverse image of SI in X. And YI, you can sort of guess what it is. And we form the products. xi times, sorry, xi times over s yi and glue them together to get x times over sy. So there's a lot of routine checks I've missed out, but um, nothing unexpected happens in this construction. So now we should have a few examples to see what this looks like. So suppose we want to take a product of two affine lines. So let's just take the product of two affine lines. Um, you might expect that this is the affine plane, but it usually isn't, as we will see later. What you need to do is you need to take the affine line and you need to take the product over a point of the affine line. And this is then the um, affine plane. And we can see this because these, these are all just affine schemes. So we can just look at what's happening at the level of rings. And here um, we've got the coordinate ring Kx. And if we tensor this with the coordinate ring of Ky, what we get is K tensored with Kxy. And as we'll see in a moment, this need not be K. Um, this is not usually K. So, so we can't just take products of schemes. We need to take products of schemes over another scheme. So um, this corresponds to taking K of X tensored over K with K of Y. And this is indeed isomorphic to K of X, Y, which corresponds to the affine plane. So this is why we we don't just want to take products of schemes. We want to take products over a base scheme because if we don't take products over a base scheme, we can't even get the product of two affine lines right. Um, um, next, you notice that the product is a bit weird. So first of all, um, the product topology, the, the product of A1 times A1 does not have the product topology. 
So if we look at A1 times A1, um, which is the affine plane, I guess I should take a product over A0, then it has all sorts of closed sets given by curves, which are not closed sets in the product topology. Um, this, of course, happened for variety, sh so shouldn't be a big surprise. But the next thing you want to note is that the product of A1 times over A0, A1, um, does not have the same set as the product of the sets A1 and A1. So not only does the topology not, it, not only is the, do we not get the product topology, we don't even get the product set. And this follows for the same reason. This closed set is the closure of its generic point. So there's a generic point of the affine plane corresponding to irreducible closed set. And this generic point doesn't come from a, a product of a point in A1 and a point in A1 in any reasonable way. I mean, occasionally it will. If, if we take a vertical line or a horizontal line, then that will come from um, a product of um, a point in here and a point in here. So the, the, the scheme theoretic product has doesn't look very much like the ordinary set theoretic or even the topological product of two spaces. Um, it gets even weirder because the product of two points well the product of two points surely that must be a point what else could it be well no it need not be a a point um, by a point I mean a scheme whose underlying space is just a point and to see this, let's look at some examples. What we can do is let's just look at the spectrum of K um, tensored over the spectrum of K of the spectrum of L, where here we've got three fields, K um, contained in big K and contained in L. And let's take KL to be finite algebraic. Well, so, and therefore algebraic extensions of little k and see what happens. So, so um, you notice that um, the spectrum of all these three spaces is just a point. So these are just points with extra structure. And um, uh, sorry, that should be a ordinary product, not a tensor product sign. So what we're going to look at is K tensored over little k with L. And we need to work out what this is. So, so let's first suppose K is the separable extension of little k. And what happens if it isn't separable? Well, we'll see a little bit later. Um, but separable extensions are already weird enough. This means that k is equal to k of x modulo p of x, where p of x is irreducible and has no multiple roots because um, it's separable. And now we can work at what k tensor with l is. So k tensor over little k with l is then just l of x modulo p of x. The tensor products over fields are very easy to work out. Um, and now this factorizes as L of x modulo p1 of x, p2 of x, and so on, where p now factorizes into irreducible factors over L. So these are irreducible over L. Um, and by the Chinese remainder theorem, um, this factors as a product. So all these, because all these PIs are co-prime and have no multiple factors because the extension is separable. So K times over K of L is isomorphic to the product um, L of X over P1 of X times L of X 
over P2 of X and so on. And this is just a product of fields. And this corresponds to a disjoint union of um, spectra. You remember the product of rings has nothing to do with the product of schemes. The product of rings corresponds to taking disjoint union of schemes. So, so, so spec of k times over little k of L is a finite discrete set with one point for each irreducible factor of P over the field L. So in particular, as we said, the product of two points isn't necessarily a point. It might be a, a finite collection of points. Um, so let's have a couple of examples. For instance, if you take Q of root two, tensed over Q with Q root two, well, this is just a field. It's the field Q root two, root three. So here the product of two points is indeed a point fine, no problem. On the other hand, if we take Q of I, say tensor with Q of I, well, if you take the polynomial X squared plus one and factor it over Q of I, we get two factors. So this splits as a product of two fields. It's Q of I times Q of I. So on the left, we've got a tensor product. On the right, we've got an ordinary product. And it just happens that two times two is two plus two. So, so we get this slightly odd thing. So the spectrum of this looks like two points. Um, well, I assumed earlier that K was separable and I sort of promised I would show you what happens if K was inseparable. So suppose K and L both inseparable over little K. Well, if you do this, things can get even weirder. So for example, let's take K to be equal to L to be equal to FP of um, T. And let's take little K to be FP of T to the P. So um, um, uh, the degree of K over big K over little K is just equal to P and if we put big T equals T to the P just for simplicity, then K is equal to K of X, quotient out by X to the P minus T. So we're taking, so we form both K and L by taking a piece root of a generator of little K. And then we find that um, K tensor over little K of L is, given as follows. Well, um, what we can do is we can just take L of X over X to the P minus T, but in L, T is a power, big T is a power of little t. So this is just L of X over X to the P minus T to the P. And since we're in characteristic P, this is just L of X over X minus T to the P. And now we see that X minus T is nil potent in K times over KL. So this is not a product of fields. In fact, it's a non-reduced scheme. So K tensor over KL is not reduced. So this has given an example of two reduced schemes over a reduced scheme whose, whose fibered product is not a reduced scheme. Um, so this is one of many reasons why trying to work in characteristic P is a, sometimes a little bit bizarre. Um, so in particular, we see from this that if you take a, a field K, then the spectrum of K Tense times the spectrum of K can be large in general. 
And if we want to get the right product of two points, if we want to say a point tensor with a point is indeed a point, we need to take the spectrum of K times over the spectrum of K with the spectrum of K. And this will then be equal to the spectrum of K. So the product of a point and a point is indeed a point, provided you remember to work over something. Okay, next lecture, we will give some more applications of products and fibered products.